Ladies and gents, from Lucy Jude Reaction, and this is Black Hole Explained from Boss to Death by the channel Cos Gazat in a nutshell. Yeah, this is about black holes. It's gonna be fun. Obviously, I will have a thing or two or thing or two to say about this. So yeah, Cos Gazat is a great channel. I reacted to quite a few videos already. If you haven't seen my reaction to it, check out the cards. There's a playlist created for it, Cos Gazat reaction or something like that. Uh, check out the reaction to uh, you know real life lore, uh, CGP Grey, Internet Story, and Salmonella things like that. And yeah, let's watch this one. And remember people, this is Cuz Gazad video, it might get blocked, so I have to put checkered box there, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, let's watch this one. Black holes are one of the strangest things in existence. They don't seem to make any sense at all. Where do they come from? And what happens if you fall into one? Stars are incredibly massive collections of mostly hydrogen atoms that collapse from enormous gas clouds under their own gravity. In their core, nuclear fusion crushes hydrogen atoms into helium, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. This energy, in the form of radiation, pushes against gravity, maintaining a delicate balance between the two forces. As long as there is fusion in the core, a star remains stable enough. But for stars with way more mass than our own sun, the heat and pressure at the core allow them to fuse heavier elements until they reach iron. Ah, Unlike yes. all the elements that went before, the fusion process that creates iron doesn't generate any energy. Yeah, so basically iron is the wall between two processes, fission and fusion. You can fusion up until you get to iron. Iron doesn't produce any energy. If anything, it might have even suck energy. I don't know. It's it's uh, still debated, I guess. But yeah. Uh, so basically, when you try to fuse iron, it sucks the energy. So you know it creates uh, you know I guess collapsing pressure. So star collapses, then it rebounds with a supernova. And uh, you know obviously if the star is big enough, uh, after rebounding with a massive supernova, it will start to collapse again, but even with the same intensity as the supernova. So it will collapse and it will keep collapsing and it will become a black hole. Iron builds up at the center of the star until it reaches a critical amount, and the balance between radiation and gravity is suddenly broken. The core collapses. Within a fraction of a second, the star implodes moving at about a quarter of the speed of light, feeding even more mass into the core. It's at this very moment that all the heavier elements in the universe are created as the star dies in a supernova explosion. This produces either a neutron star, or if the star is massive enough, the entire mass of the core collapses into a black hole. If you looked at a black hole, what you'd really be seeing is the... <clears throat> so yeah. Uh, with a big star when after the supernova, you know, it collapses back and because of the pressure uh, It becomes a neutron star the densest matter there could be But if the star is even bigger and it has a even more bigger explosion because of it when it collapses back It puts your more pressure into the neutron star and goes into the state that we have our physics cannot tell us because as far as we know Neutron star is the densest thing there can be. That's what the laws of physics tells us. Black hole is even more denser than that. So this is outside of our understanding, outside of our understanding of the laws of physics. So black holes are really scary thing because we don't know how that even could be. I mean, what's inside it, uh, how that can even come to be after the, it's, it's even more denser than neutron stars. The event horizon. Anything that crosses the event horizon needs to be traveling faster than the speed of light to escape. In other words, it's impossible. So we just see a black sphere reflecting nothing. But if the event horizon is the black part, what is the whole part of the black hole? The singularity. We're not sure what it is exactly. A singularity may be infinitely dense, meaning all its mass is concentrated into a single point in space with no surface or volume, or something completely different. Right now, we just don't yeah, I feel like, you know, the black holes are so extreme that, you know, atoms and, you know, nucleus and everything gets ripped apart. I'm probably sure even the quarks gets ripped apart. I don't know what comes after that. Nobody knows. And that's the thing. I think it's a bath of some kind of an energy inside the black hole. Dense bath of some kind of energy. Because uh, it's not going to be uh, something dense matter that we could think of because it rips apart even the quarks. I mean, I don't, we have no understanding of what comes after that. 
Uh, we are not at that point, obviously. No, it's like a dividing by zero error. By the way, black holes do not suck things up like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. If we were to swap the sun for an equally massive black hole, nothing much would change for Earth, except that we would freeze to death, of course. Yeah, so black hole sucks the space around it. It doesn't try to suck things. Black hole sucks the space around it. So basically, imagine that a, a space is not an empty thing, it's an actual thing. Space bends, it curves, and inside the space there's a massive direct hole. Imagine there is a small hole in the ground. That's how black hole it is. So the hole's uh, edges are the event horizon. If something touches that, obviously it's gonna go inside the hole. Like how, you know, in the golf, how the ball goes inside the hole. Sometimes it touches the, you know, comes close to the edge and then it falls down. That's how black holes work. Something touches the, you know, uh, event horizon, it goes in. People had the, the, you know, this question like, how does light go in? I mean, uh, surely light can travel straight past it. Why does it go in? Uh, it doesn't have any mass. But, you know, light travel in straight line in space. If the space itself curves and goes inside the black hole, obviously light's gonna go inside the black hole too. It's not gonna come out. So, yeah. What would happen to you if you fell into a black hole? The experience of time is different around black holes. From the outside, you seem to slow down as you approach the event horizon. So, time passes slower for you. At some point, you would appear to freeze in time, slowly turn red, and disappear. While from your perspective, you can watch the rest of the universe in fast forward, kind of like seeing into the future. Right now, we don't know what happens next, but we think it could be one of... Yeah, gravity, basically strong gravity, you know, slows down every process of your body and everything around you. Everything that is inside the field of strong gravity their process slows down. So for them, their time slowed down and everything outside of that is fast forwarding. That's why in that interstellar movie, uh, you know, Matthew McConaughey and uh, you know, all of them went to that planet that was close to the black hole or something that had immense gravity. So when they went back to the ship, the person there was already old. So, you know, obviously when you were at the event horizon, everybody from outside looking there would see that, you know, it basically came to a still stop. Like it's not even moving, but obviously that's not the case. And uh, to, uh, to to whoever's at the you know event horizon would see outside and everything was just speed passed by. So yeah, it is really weird when you think about it. You would literally see the entire universe run out and die, I guess. Two things. One, you die a quick death. A black hole curves space so much that once you cross the event horizon, there is only one possible direction. You can take this literally inside the event horizon. You can only go in one direction. It's like being in a really tight alley that closes behind you after each step. The mass of a black hole is so concentrated, at some point even tiny distances of a few centimeters would mean that gravity acts with millions of times more force on different parts of- Ah, uh, come on, man. We as humans are not that strongly built. We would get, you know, atomized way before then. So yeah, and even there is even bigger issues like, you know, uh, black hole would have such a tidal force around it. They would, you know, obviously we all, we all know that, you know, any matter around black hole, you know, gas clouds, any matter gets heated up. That's how you can see black hole in the first place because all the things around black hole is, he you know, heated up. And yeah, so you see all bright, you know, glowing, heated up uh, matter. So obviously if any human come close to the black hole, just the heat would kill you. Uh, and then, you know, obviously you start to get ripped apart because black holes are, you know, has real, very powerful gravity, but are really small compared to that. So as soon as you come close to the event horizon, start to come close, you start to get atomized. So yeah. ...of your body. Your cells get torn apart as your body stretches more and more until you're a hot stream of plasma, one atom wide. Two, you die a very quick death. Spaghetti fight. Very soon after you cross the event horizon, you would hit a firewall and be terminated in an instant. Neither of these options are particularly pleasant. How soon you would die depends on the mass of the black hole. A smaller a black hole would kill you before you even entered its event horizon, while you probably could travel inside a supermassive black hole for quite a while. As a rule of thumb, the further away from the singularity what? you are, the lower. Supermassive black holes as the mass of billions of sun. Yes, it's big, but you know, you can't really compare it like that. 
I'm pretty sure even before you touch the you know event horizon of the supermassive black hole, you die much before that. You're not gonna go inside the event horizon and be still intact. I mean, it's a supermassive black hole. It has immense mass and gravity. Uh, I know there are small black holes where it has much stronger tidal forces, but those um, uh, those black holes' mass is low compared to the supermassive ones. So supermassive ones are big, but they also have big mass and the gravity is stronger too. So, if, uh, I mean, if you th think of the strongest stuff and put uh, put inside uh, the black hole, maybe that's where you could argue that maybe it will go inside the event horizon in the supermassive ones rather than the small one, small black hole, and not get ripped apart. But humans are not that, you know, strongly made. So I'm pretty sure we would get ripped apart pretty early even at the supermassive black hole so yeah and you know we would die much before that like i said all the matter around the black hole is heated up is intensely hot we would uh, get burned up much before that that is why there are jets coming on top of the black holes because all the matter around the black hole is uh, you know trying to get in the black hole but can't because black hole can only take uh, somewhat matter at a time and all the matter around it trying to get in but it can't so it gets heated up heated up and gets you know j j jetted outside of the black hole from the top the longer you live black holes come in different sizes there are stellar mass black holes with a few times the mass of the sun and the diameter of an asteroid and then there are these supermassive black holes which are found at the heart of every galaxy and have been feeding for billions of years Currently, the largest supermassive black hole known is S50014 plus 81, 40 billion times the mass of our Sun. It is 236.7 billion kilometers in diameter, which is 47 times the distance from the Sun to Pluto. As powerful as black holes are, they will eventually evaporate through a process called Hawking radiation. To understand how this works, we have to look at empty space. Empty space is not really empty, but filled with virtual particles yeah. popping into existence and annihilating each other again. When this happens right on the edge of a black hole, one of the virtual particles will be drawn into the black hole and the other will escape and become a real particle. So the black hole is losing energy. This happens incredibly slowly at first and gets faster as the black hole becomes smaller. When it arrives at the mass of a large asteroid, it's radiating at room temperature. When it has the mass of a mountain, it radiates with about the heat of our sun, and in the last second of its life, the black hole radiates away with the energy of billions of nuclear bombs in a huge explosion. But this process is... Yeah, the virtual particle thing, that's quantum, quantum physics right there, quantum mechanics. So yeah, that's just really weird. When you start to uh, you know, learn about all the you know, quantum things, it's just... Yeah, all things you can learn about science, all things, and as as far as, as soon as you come to the quantum mechanics, uh, that's it. That just makes you go like, what the hell? So yeah, the, the the day we you know we master quantum mechanics is the day we're gonna rule everything because that's such a important uh, scientific field. So yeah, space empty. You no, know, there are virtual particles that you know comes to existence and kill each other. Obviously, black hole takes one, so that is gonna escape. I mean, its counterpart is now inside the black hole, so it can escape, and that in the end requires energy, so it sucks out the energy from the black hole. So yeah, it's you know, uh, evening out process. If you're gonna take one virtual particle and other escape, so they, then you have to give energy for it to escape. It's incredibly slow. The biggest black holes Google, we know yeah. might take up to a Google years to evaporate. This is so long that when the last black hole radiates away, nobody will be around to witness it. Yeah. The universe will have become uninhabitable long before then. This is not the end of our story. There are loads more interesting ideas about black holes. We'll explore them in part two. A big thanks to Fraser Kane for help. Yeah, this was a good small explanation video. It was fun. Yeah, to this, you know, black holes are just like I said. Two, I think, as far as I can remember, two forces of the universe that are really scary. One is the most famous one, which is black holes, and other things are strange, strange lights, strange stars. I also reacted to that video. But yeah, that's just the, the strange lit thing is just, you know, uh, nobody has detected that yet, but it is kind of possible. And the day we detect it, it's going to be really scary. So, you know, that's so in that sense, since it's just theoretically possible we haven't detected it 
black hole is the most scary thing in the world but the day we detect strangeless that's just going to be scary because they're literally zombies they're gonna strange strangeless comes to you and turns you into it in the end killing you that is zombie like thing so yeah so that was black holes all right people if you like my reaction don't forget to like and subscribe check out the reaction day there's a link in the description check out the cast follow please check out the end cards and yeah i'll see you next time